Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Low Spec Labs. In the last video, well, in our last Proxmox video, because there's been two last videos, we went over some stuff to do with Caddy Server. Today I'm going to expand on that a little bit more. So last time we talked about Caddy, I like to use Caddy because it has nice integration with Cloudflare. So basically the way Caddy works is you go to your DNS provider and you enter your IP address. You then go to Caddy and when you give the Caddy config a URL, it's going to look at that DNS request and make sure that the URL is coming from Caddy itself. So what you have to do is open ports 80 and 443 on the host that you're using make sure caddy server is running on that host either on the server itself or in a virtual machine or a container or a jail or something like that and then you're going to have to find some way to get ports 80 and 443 to that caddy service so you can port forward use virtual firewalls whatever you have to to stick at the traffic all the way through this is a good way to do things but wouldn't it be convenient if caddy could just reach out over the internet and update the DNS request without us having to open ports. That's where the Caddy's DNS challenge comes in. Thankfully, the DNS challenge is built in the Caddy. What is not built in the Caddy is the Cloudflare extension for the DNS challenge. So what we now have to do is rebuild Caddy with the Cloudflare extension baked in. So it takes a couple minutes. This is a fun one. It involves us doing some stuff with Git. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, boys. So in our last video, we got Caddy installed on this server right here. And it's what we're using to reverse proxy all our stuff. Before we go ahead and start making changes to it, let's go ahead and take a snapshot. Create changes. And we'll give it a couple of seconds. And then let's also do a backup. Just in case we have to restore the entire VM and that snapshot doesn't work. Unfortunately, I've learned the hard way. It's best to have backups of things before you make changes, especially in production. So let's go ahead and let's continue. So now that we have Caddy installed, you can follow my video in the last vid. What we now want to do is get Go installed. So Go is one of the dependencies here for Caddy. So click Go, Linux. Let's see here, remove any Go. We don't have Go installed, user bin Go. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Mm. Ah, okay. So, in order to install Go, first we download Go. So, click here and let's see if it gives us a Windows version. And then we want to find for x86 Linux, x86 64. So, this is the one we want AMD 64. From there, we go back to Caddy, we do a wget, we paste the link, and we wait for it to download. We then go back to go, and we press, we use this command, and what this command is doing, if we break it down, it's removing the old gold repository, and then it's chaining the unzip to the user local or go file, right? So it's cleaning up any old mentions to go, unzipping that download we just made and then dumping it into user local. So we go here, we hit paste. Cool. And then ls slash user local. We've got a folder called go. Perfect. Now let's see if there's anything else we have to do. All user path variable. You can do this. So now we have to add our user go bin to our path variable. So we copy, paste, cool. Go back to the go install, and then we can verify go is working by simply doing go version. Cool. So we have go installed. And that's the first step. All right. Okay, cool. So now that we have Go installed, we now have to install the XCaddy binary. Thankfully for us, there is a repo where this is already compiled. 
So first, we make sure we have the latest key ring. Then, uh, let's make sure I install sudo. Cool, perfect. So from there, we add the key ring or the archive key. Mm. Cool. Then we add the X caddy list. Cool. And then we run an update. So we can do sudo have get update. Cool. And just like that, we've updated and Xcaddy is installed. So from there, we now have to build Xcaddy with our specific version of the GitHub Cloudflare plugin, All right? So if we want to do that, here's what we do. All right, cool. So now that we have Xcaddy installed, we can now build Xcaddy with the, or rather we can build Caddy with the Cloudflare DNS challenge. So here's how you do that. This is a pretty straightforward command, like a lot of things in Linux, or at least a lot of things we've been going into so far. So, to build this, you would do xcaddy build dash dash with and then github.com slash caddy dns slash cloudflare. Github.com slash caddy dns slash Cloudflare. And we just let that run. And what it's doing now is building the Caddy server binary, but this time it is including the Cloudflare module, which we'll need if we want to reach out to Cloudflare. You could do this with basically any DNS provider. You could even do this with the stock Acme. Um, provider so I'll show you how to do that after this video but basically you modify your CNAME record with the Acme text register your account with Acme and then because that text record is there um, Acme uses that to verify that you are who you say you are so you don't necessarily need to use Cloudflare for this you can use any DNS provider it's just Cloudflare works for me that's what we're doing this video for All right, cool. And the caddy server build of the DNS challenge is done. So why do you want to use the DNS challenge instead of port 80 and 443 when you would need port 80 and 443 to let traffic in anyway? Well, the advantage to the DNS challenge is that it allows you to get SSL certs for private services without opening those ports. So let's say you had your Proxmox cert inside your network and you wanted to give that Proxmox host a proper SSL cert so it wasn't erroring out. <clears throat> you could use this to, or you could use the DNS challenge to authenticate and generate your SSL search. No need for anyone on the internet to know that this host is available. The only downside is of course, you'd have to have some kind of uh, internet record available for the host, but it's not too bad. Okay. Okay, and cool. So now when we list our directory, or rather use lsalh, we'll see we have a caddy executable here. That's read, write, executable, read, read. Okay, cool. So now what we need to do is ls slash user bin and grab caddy. Let's see the permissions on that file. So what we wanna do 
is copy the caddy that's here to user bin okay let's see So what just happened? Basically, we tried to copy our new caddy binary to user bin and it failed and it told us the file was busy. Basically, it was busy because we were still running the caddy server. So I went ahead and stopped the caddy service. I then copied our user, our new binary over to user bin and it overwrote the original ones. You will go ahead and click system CTL start caddy to a system CTL status caddy. As you can see the service is running. Now though, let's see here. When we edit our caddy config, and of course I'm gonna blur this out so you can't see. If we were to edit our caddy config and add two lines right here, TLS DNS Cloudflare, this would allow us to authenticate and get SSL certs without the need to have ports 80 and 443 open. This is useful like if we wanted to give the PV Hertz, like this host right here, a private internet certificate, right? We're not actually gonna do that today because there is honestly no need to. Everything's working the way it should be right now. But I thought this would be useful for some of you guys. Feel free to let me know if you run any issues or if you have any questions in the comments down below.